Hi everyone! In this episode we'll be creating some shaders to improve the look of our planets by coloring them with a gradient based on the elevation of the planet. Now this series is an attempt at porting Sebastian Lag's excellent procedural planet tutorial from Unity to Godot. So if you enjoyed this, do also check out his tutorial for more detailed explanation. That said, in Godot we'll be using the pretty simple shader language to give our planet's faces some custom material setting. So the first thing we need to do is go to each of our faces and in the geometry property under the material override create a new shader material and create a new shader. Now this shader right now is erroring so we'll just add a basic shader type as a spatial and then we can get the material and save it on the disk as, for example, planet material. And now that we've saved it, we can go into all our other faces in the geometry material override and we can just load the material we just saved. This way, they're all sharing the same material, so any change we do to the material is going to affect all the faces. Now, if we want the color to change based on the elevation of our planet, that means the shader is going to need to know what's the minimum and maximum height of our planet. And to do this, what we're going to do is calculate this value when we're generating the mesh. Now, ideally, we want this value to be shared between all the faces of our mesh. So the best way to do this is to put this property inside our planet data that's shared between all the uh, mesh faces. We don't need to have it as an export because this is going to be a calculated value so I can just do var min height and var max height and then in the planet just before regenerating the mesh we can reset the values And then when we are generating the mesh for each faces, all we have to do is get the length of the point on planet. And if this length is smaller than the min height, then we save this min height. And we do the same thing for the uh, max height, but the opposite, of course. Now we want to pass this to our shader and this is also an operation that you probably don't want to do anywhere but uh, make sure to do it in the call deferred plus it has the added bonus that if you do it in the call deferred then you make sure that this happens after all the faces have been regenerated. So what we're going to do is pass our planet data to our update mesh method and once we've generated our mesh, we can check the material override and set a shader parameter for our min height, which is going to be our planet data that min height, and do the same thing for our max height. Of course, these properties don't exist yet in our shader, so we can go back into our shader editor and we're going to add uniforms, which are the way to pass values between the code and the shader, and we're going to call them carefully the same name as what we just used in our script. Now that we have the min height and max height, we need to figure out how close we are to these values for each of our vertex that we're rendering. And since we set the color in the fragment shader, but the height is actually a property of the vertex, we're going to need both a vertex shader and a fragment shader. So we're going to add a vertex function first that is going to get us the height of our vertex. And because of the way we are generating our planet, the center of our planet is the origin of our mesh. That means that the position of each of our vertex is actually the radius of our planet or the distance. So the length 
the height we want is just the length of the vertex in local space. So that's awesome because that means we can just do height equal length of vertex. Now height is not defined because it's a value we want to pass to our fragment shader to decide the color. And to do this, we're going to have to declare a varying. And the reason we call it a varying is because this value is going to be interpolated between each of our vertices to render the triangle that's going to be our mesh. So now in the fragment shader, we can get the proportion between the min and high, max height. So basically a linear interpolation between the height and the max height minus min height minus min height divided by and this is going to give us a linear interpolation so basically when height is equal to min height it's going to be zero and when height is equal to max height it's going to be one and to make sure that this is working we can set our albedo which is our color of our material to be the uh, value t. So now we're setting a color between 0 and 1 based on the height of the vertex from the center of our planet. So if we go here and we regenerate our planet we can see that the oceans are basically 0 and the top of our mountain, the very tallest mountain, is going to be basically white. And we have a nice gradient between all of those mountains. That means we're going to be able to assign a color for each values of this height. Now to do this, Godot provides something called gradient texture. So we can go back into our planet data and we can add a new resource, planet color. Now, if you look in the editor, you're going to see that uh, this planet color, we can create a new gradient texture, and then we can create a new gradient. And basically, this gradient is just a texture that's one pixel high and a certain number of pixel wide. This number is specified here. In our case, 2048 is probably way too much, so we can just reduce it to something like 128, and then we can set different colors. For example, we can say that at zero, the color is going to be red. And then at one, it's going to be something like blue. And of course, we can add stuff in between. For example, like in the middle is going to be yellow or something. Now, this texture has been generated automatically by Godot, but we are not passing it to our shader yet. So the way we're going to do that is, of course, to go to our mesh generation. And since we're already passing the planet data, that means we can set another shader parameter in our material. And maybe this time we can call it height color. And we're going to pass the planet data dot uh, planet color. Of course, once again, this property doesn't exist in our shader yet, so we can go back into our shader and we are going to add a new uniform, but this time a sampler 2D, which is the name for a texture, and we're going to call it height color. And now we want to fetch the color from this texture based on our height here that we calculated. Now to get a point inside the texture, you always need a value between 0 and 1 in x and y. But like I said, a gradient is special because it always only has one pixel high. So the y is always going to be 0. So all we need to do is take the t that we calculated and use it as the u coordinate inside our texture. And to do that, we can say like 3 that color equal texture 
Now we need the sampler 2D, so that's going to be our height color. And then the coordinate is going to be a vec2, which is going to be t in x and 0 in y. And then if our color has RGBA, but our shader is set up to support only non-transparent object, so we can say we don't want the alpha. And of course, now we just need to set the albedo to this color that we calculated. Means that if we go back in the editor and we update our scene, you can see at the tippy top, we get the blue color, in the middle, we get the yellow, and at the bottom, we get the red. And now, now that means we can play with these colors to get some really nice effects. For example, we can have the ocean blue at the bottom, maybe something like this. And then maybe on the corner, we get some kind of sandy color thingy, something like that. And then in the middle, we can get some lush green. And at the top, maybe we have a little bit more um, desaturated you know, greenish brown, like the top of a mountain. And at the very top of the mountain, like the peaks are gonna be white. And just like that, we're starting to have something that looks pretty much like a planet. After that, it's just a question of tweaking the heights and everything until you are you get something you're satisfied with. Now, in the next episode, we'll try to make this all a little bit more fancy. But until then, see you all in my next episode, and bye!